Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is David Garcia. I'm the chair of the Department of Music. <laughs> Welcome to the second night of a wonderful and well-deserved celebration of an amazing career, 43 years teaching jazz, mentoring, being a wonderful colleague. Um, our favorite person here in the jazz world and beyond, Jim Ketch. Let's give it up for Jim. Now, we all know that without Jim, there's no jazz, and I don't think that's uh, an exaggeration. But of course, we've had his students over the many years of his uh, tenure here in the department. But we also had all of you supporting, coming out to his, their performances, um, and most especially those of you who have supported as donors. And I, I wanted to make sure that I recognize all of you and to thank you for the many years of support that you gave uh, Jim and the program. Without you all, I, seriously, um, he, he couldn't have done half of what he was able to accomplish. I most especially like to thank Jamie Abersall. Give it up for Jamie. Dr. Jesse White. Thomas F. Stewart. Fred and Gail Fearing, Jim and Joe Ann Harley, the family of Kay Kaiser, and all of the anonymous donors over the years who have supported the program here at UNC. Thank you very much. And, and I do also want to give a special thanks also to Mr. Tom Keenan, who's here with us. Uh, you might know of the Keenan Scholars Program, which is the flagship scholarship program here in the Department of Music. And it has uh, supported several jazz students over the years. And so, Tom, thank you so much for your support of the department, including for our jazz program. And last but not least, we need to thank Susan Ketch. Susan, for 43 years, you were really the backbone of the entire operation. Without you, truly, uh, Jim could not have done what he's done. Uh, so from, um, on behalf of the department, the college, and the university, and all of the students that have come through Jim's uh, mentorship, thank you so much. And so with that, everybody, welcome the Jazz Band alumni crew, everybody. Hands together. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. We are um, excited to share this evening with you. And um, it's, it's been uh, just so much better than I thought it'd be. Um, and I'm a pretty optimistic guy. Um, it, it's just been, um, you know, I think this is one of those things where you say that, that weekend was probably full of memories for a lifetime. And I'm telling you, it, it is. I will remember the, the stories and the smiles and the laughter and, and that for a long time to come. And for that, I feel very grateful. Um, I'm also fairly tired, and I said, I'm going to say my thank yous before I, you know, lose any more uh, uh, intelligence, so to speak. So um, anyway, th there's a clan right up here that all, all belongs to me, so to speak. So I'm just going to do this, and then we've got a much shorter program than last night, so it won't be a long evening, but it's going to be a great evening. First, I want to thank my wife, Susan, and, oh, yeah, please, honey. Yeah. 
We are not going into the reunion planning business because uh, we know all the ins and outs of it now, and it's uh, too demanding for folks our age. Um, but we uh, we have had a great time, and uh, Susan knows these kids as well. Kids, I've called them kids the whole weekend, uh, as well as I do, and they were hugging, and it was just so fun to see. Thank, honey, for everything you've done. And I'll just... If you'll allow me, I'll just sort of go down the row and they can wave or stand, whatever. But my two daughters, Katie and Megan, are here with their, uh, my son-in-laws, Mark and Max. My three grandchildren are here, Lily, Graham, and Oliver. Susan's sister from Texas, Nancy Hillis, is here. And our dear friends, Pam and Steve Baker from Evansville, Indiana. And Susan Williford from Durham, would you all wave? Yeah, thank you for being here. And one of the coolest things is Graham had his first middle school jazz band rehearsal last week. Yeah, Graham! And he's thinking that the baritone sax may be a part of his life coming up next week. So that's the one down at the end, and he's great. Just listen to him all night, and you'll be in good shape. I want to thank my colleagues in the Department of Music. David Garcia is such a great colleague and, and is doing a wonderful job as a chair. Can you imagine being chair during a pandemic? It's, it's a hard enough job when it's sunny outside, if you know what I mean. And uh, uh, he's just done a great job. And I still am on the list, sir, for the department. And he's just on top of everything. So would you give a hand to David? He's just done a great job. And uh, my colleague, colleague, Jeff Fuchs, who's director of university bands, was here at 7.15 this morning to help us set up for a brunch in the tent outside between Hill Hall and Memorial. And when the caterers didn't show for about 50 minutes after they were expected to arrive, Jeff hopped in his little golf cart and drove down there just to see what was going on. That's friendship. Jeff Fuchs. And last night, you got to meet four of our six jazz faculty, Steven Anderson, Rasan Barber, Jason Foreman, and Dan Davis, and they were brilliant in playing. There's also others, Juan Alamo, who plays vibes and world music, and Baron Timas, who plays guitar. It is a thrill to call those guys my colleagues, our jazz faculty. And uh, the staff here is just unbelievably excellent. Everybody works so hard to make everything work. Um, they treat these events as if it were their own, and uh, they have given untold hours to this. I want to acknowledge our um, staff, Kat Zachary, El Fisaha, Angeline Warren, Jesse Moorfield, uh, Jay Harper, and Diane Steinhaus. Would you give them a huge round of applause? And I'm really about to wrap this up, believe it or not. Um, so I, I came to UNC in 1977 and retired in July 1, 2020. So this, this is only a year di displaced event. We were hoping to do it last year. And uh, we just had to move it a year because of the pandemic. But I literally think that on this stage, we have that span covered from 1977. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all the way to 2020, and in fact, Alex Upton is uh, a current junior here. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's already rumblings about, you know, an 80th birthday celebration reunion again, and uh, I don't know, we'll have to see about that. But uh, our rehearsal today um, was magical, and I, I anticipate that the performance for you tonight will be that way as well. And um, I just want to thank all of you so much. There's some there, there's some there, and there's a lot here. Um, f you know, I sent out 10-page emails about what we're going to do. We decided not to play softball. We actually decided to play a concert in instead. And uh, boy, did they come ready to play. And I think you'll hear that within uh, about one measure tonight. So thank you for indulging me and all that. There are just so many people that work so hard to make this event. I just what didn't feel fair not to say that. So thanks a lot, and here we go.
That was a, a wonderful tune out of the library of the great Count Basie Orchestra. Yeah, we got a little bit of stage switching on just about every piece. Um, and it was written by Sammy Nestico. And this is a piece when I was in college many years ago uh, that had just been published. And it was sort of like a, a big lift for jazz education when music from the Count Basie Orchestra or Duke Ellington's orchestra became available. And this Sammy Nestico was... Um, a prolific writer and gave us so much music. And um, he passed away about a year ago, and we thought we'd, we'd honor Sammy Nestico and all the great work he did for um, the Boise Orchestra and high schools and colleges all over the country. You heard some great soloists, Ryan Raven on the trumpet. Oh, they're up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
He used to be on that corner right there. Um, I'll, I'll say their names, and uh, you can just envision what they look like. Um, Ryan Raven, Nick Seng stacking on the tenor sax, Dana Chell on the uh, guitar, Brian Breitenbaugh Graham on the baritone sax, and Sean Olson on the piano. Those are our souls on the first tune. This uh, next tune dates from the late 1940s, written by one of the great bebop pianists and composers, Tad Dameron. It's called So Easy, and it's a blues. Thank you. 
Before, no, don't get up yet. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to make that mistake twice. Alex Upton on the tenor sax. Will Cavanis and Ben Robinson on the trumpets. Charles Cleaver on the piano. Now we can make this work. Thank you. Uh, this, this next number is uh, near and dear to my heart. It, it's uh, a uh, composition by Duke Ellington's writing compatriot, Billy Strayhorn, called Isfahan. It uh, is one of nine movements of a, a suite that Ellington wrote between 1963 and 1966 called Impressions of the Far East. And um, that was some of the things he did in the latter part of his career was he was not, he never studied formally, so he tended to write little vignettes and put them into the uh, shape of a suite. And um, Ellington had, he collected soloists, uh, much like we might collect a handsome suit or a sweater or whatever, and if he wanted something to be romantic and sensuous, um, he would call on his lead alto player, Johnny Hodges, to play that sound. And uh, I think we probably did this when you were here some 20 years ago. Yeah, and we're gonna do it again tonight. This is Wamsi Tatapali, and he's playing uh, Isfahan by Billy Strayhorn. Hope you enjoy it.
Hello, everybody. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be back here in North Carolina. Uh, I'm Scott Rautenberg, and I was in the class of 2001. And uh, Jim just uh, meant so much in my career as a professional musician. I think without the, all of the training and experience that I got here and also traveling um, on the road and going to Europe with his band, uh, I might not have uh, led the same life that I, that I did. And it's, it's been a real trip uh, getting to, to live the musical life and creative life. And I wanted to do something special for this event. Um, as things turned out, I ended up becoming uh, not just a, a pianist, but a composer and arranger. Uh, and uh, so I thought I'd like to arrange something for this event. And so this next piece was uh, commissioned by the uh, Department of Music here. And uh, this is the jazz standard, there will never be another you. And uh, of course, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's right. It's a great tune, and uh, I think I have some memory of, of Jim liking this one uh, from, uh, from all those that 20 something years ago. And I uh, just thought that it would be fun to arrange, and so I take it through some twists and turns here and some unexpected places and it's just great uh, being able to to play with him on this and once again thank you Jim and I hope you enjoy Thank you. 
Scott Rautenberg, Mike Gillespie conducting for us, and the band, brand new chart. Great job. Thank you so much. So um, about this time, about the halfway point in, in the concerts, it's wise in this pandemic to kind of let the aerosols um, drift slowly down to the ground and we'll stomp them and, and be done with them. Um, and I think some of the students uh, have been working on a little something. So I'm going to turn it over to them um, and we'll just do this little interval and then we'll come back and have another four tunes for you. Aren't these guys and gals great? One rehearsal today. Unbelievable. It makes me think of my current students. Why did it take us eight weeks to prepare a concert when we could do it in one afternoon? We could save so much money that way. All right, I'm gonna uh, am I turning it over to, I'm turning it over to Brad Lindy. We are like this, Brad Lindy and I. Okay, so um, didn't really prepare anything, but uh, we have an idea of what we're going to do. I planned on transcribing a bunch of Don Rickles uh, <laughs> Friar you know, Club roast things, but this turned into a different event, so um, I'll just speak from the heart. Uh, what we want to do in this time is just um, have some of uh, Jim's students, former students, just give you a little idea of what he means to us and whatever we do at this moment. Um, won't be enough to convey the, um, the feelings we have and the friendships and the progress we've made since, uh, since uh, running into Jim, you know, 20, 30, however many years ago. So I'll start off, and uh, without standard hyperbole or any kind of idle praise, uh, just explain to you uh, uh, that I'm just one story out of, um, you know, many. Uh, uh, the lives that Jim has touched, and... Um, I'm a unique case. I went to Elon University and graduated in 2001, uh, but I knew about Jim when I was in high school. My uh, high school sweetheart was a year ahead and she was taking Jim histories, uh, Jim's jazz history class. And so she taught me through Jim all about uh, jazz history through the Mark Gridley book, bringing me to concerts here to hear the NCJRO. I even took a summer class with him uh, on Masters of Jazz in 1999. And, and when he wrote something on my paper, he said I had a most solid foundation in jazz history. I didn't realize how much that would play into my adult life. And so after I graduated, um, I was checking out all the things that were happening at this program, and I just wanted to be a part of it. I already had my degree, I had a job, sorta, and, uh, but I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to be a part of this. So as a kind of a Pinocchio student, you know, not a real boy, but you know, I was gonna be, um, I, I enrolled as a graduate student, special studies, and Jim said with that designation that I could do ensembles. So I spent three years here and I uh, went on to graduate school later in, uh, in Maryland. But uh, the time I spent here and the time I spent with Jim and the people I met here uh, have been the most important relationships in my life. So I thank Jim for that. But um, what I wanted to say was that um, uh, everything I've done in my, in my life as a musician and as a teacher and as a community um, entity has been inspired directly by, uh, by Jim Ketch. So uh, that idea of uh, emulating and assimilating and innovating, okay, great, uh, uh, sure, we all do that. Um, Donald Byrd had a quote that he said, you know, we, we, want our, we want our younger generations to do as we did, not what we did. I think with Jim Ketch, it's, it should be both. You know, not only doing as he does, but doing what he does is so important to all of us and to the community. So that's something I've taken with me all these years and because of Jim because of being in this program and being exposed to Barry Harris Slide Hampton uh, all these great artists I said well I want to keep doing that so I did it in my adult life with my uh, professional band and with my students and so this this effect this butterfly effect or whatever it is um, made me uh, start a big band in DC uh, to, to mimic the NCGRO because I wanted to uh, have that uh, large family of uh, a network of people that we could work with so um, I just want to thank Jim for that, and uh, and I think everyone else has the same experience. But this is this is coming home. It's 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 not all the other things I I think we've done. It's um, being on the stage with Jim and letting him be um, 
you know, our teacher one more time, uh, you know, in a, kind of an official capacity. Uh, I'm probably forgetting all the things I wanted to say. I did make some notes, just really quickly, um, just to make sure I didn't forget anything, which I already have. Um, oh, well, I just wanted to end maybe this small segment by saying, uh, Jim was quoted once at Clark Terry had, uh, that Clark Terry had the ability to reach down, embrace, and lift up the people he was around. And I think uh, that's the key phrase that sticks out in my head. That's what I share with every, every time I do some kind of master class that uh, the Jim has uh, instilled in our hearts, that he's reached down, embraced us all, and lifted us up and made, us, uh, made it possible for us to be our, our best selves. And uh, I, I can't imagine my life or, or, or world without uh, Jim Ketch standing in front of us or singing backgrounds. Or, I'm rambling at this point, but I just want to say, Jim, I love you, and uh, you've made a difference not only in my life and everyone else's life, but boy, how many lives have you touched? Who, who could be more important to me or my colleagues or my students and their students and their parents and everything down the line? So thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. So I'm going to invite Becca to come up and talk next. Hey, y'all. So I'm, uh, I'm Becca Clemens. Uh, I was fortunate enough to play in Jim's jazz band at Carolina from 2010 through 2014, but um, still definitely consider myself a student uh, of Jim Ketch and hopefully a lifelong student of Jim Ketch. Um, I was also fortunate enough to grow up in the Triangle area, and I'm now a middle school band director. Uh, and so I just kind of wanted to talk about Jim's impact, not only you know the, the scope of it at the collegiate level, but what he's done for jazz in the state and in the Triangle and jazz education and within the community has just been unbelievable. Um, the, the university work alone would have been impressive for any one man. Um, but for, uh, for, for all the other things he's done in his life, it's just truly incredible. Um, and I just feel fortunate that my, my viewpoints have changed, you know, um, through the years, starting with being a young student in the Triangle. And, and I don't know, you know, I'm, you've all obviously been touched by, by Jim in some way, and, and he's made big impacts on, on all of our lives. Um, but the Triangle jazz scene, uh, starting with the school, middle high school uh, it's not typical <laughs> we, we don't live in a very normal uh, you know world here for jazz education um, it's not it's not common in the rest of the country to have such a strong um, you know jazz education uh, in in these younger younger groups and and we have to credit Jim with that he's been visiting and working with young people his his um, personality is infectious, his passion is infectious, uh, and in many ways in these 40 years, he's been cultivating young students all the way through their entire careers in, in jazz, and he's, he's impact, impacted us in so many ways um, that I, we couldn't even begin to, to discuss all of that, uh, but I, I do feel fortunate, you know, having seen him sitting in the band, uh, I think we all knew we were lucky sitting in the band, getting to be taught by him, but as I continue to grow as an educator, uh, and I just, I just keep coming back for more. Uh, there's just, you, you see things through different lenses, and he just keeps having more to give, and, and I know he's going to continue to give more to the community through the NCJRO, through all of his educational outreach, um, and it's, it's truly, truly impressive. Um, not only that, if you go to any kind of show or gig or jam session in town, uh, I like to think, you know, wherever two or more are gathered to play jazz, Jim is there. <laughs> um, even if he's not. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Everyone has been affected by him in some way. And uh, it's, it's truly incredible in his work with the Abersall Camps. I mean, it just it goes on and on. And, and I love swapping stories with him. And I'll, I'll share, you know, a couple with you. Um, we were recently discussing some middle school uh, I'm a middle school band director, so there's lots of stories. Um, and he was telling me, you know, how a trumpet player on one of his, uh, I think it was maybe an all-region jazz clinic, uh, started to play, and there was rattling in his mute. And he said, what's that rattle? And the kid said, well, I'm keeping some M&Ms in here for later. You know? <laughs> and 
it, you know, it, it takes a special person to be able to teach down to that level and appreciate, <laughs> you know, appreciate why that's funny and still have an impact on these young kids. I mean, it's just, it's amazing how infectious his personality is and his passion and and it's, it's not something that can be replicated with, with ease. So the fact that he can, you know, appreciate that in a young person, in addition to teach at an extremely high level, you know, with, with college students, uh, is, is very special. Um, and, and then I'll leave you with, with one story, and forgive me, some of you probably heard this if you were on his retirement Zoom call, um, but it kind of ties into his, his just joy uh, that he lives his life with. Um, but our, the first concert I ever participated in on this stage uh, as a freshman, we were in the teardown process. It was post-concert. Uh, by all rights, he should have been exhausted, going home to sleep, grumpy, you know. But, I, you know, he's, he's never like that, as many of you know. And he's just, you know, happily moving around, moving gear. And he comes up to me, and he real sneakily he puts his arm around me, and he shoves something into my hand, and he goes... This is the secret to everything I know about jazz. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, great. So I look down, and it's just trash. Um, <laughs> he's just, he was just trying to get rid of some garbage. <laughs> but it was just, it was so wonderful to, you know, even the teardown process with him is a learning experience, and it's fun, and you, we, we can tell that, that your, your passion is infectious, and what you have done for the jazz community has just, the scope is so wide, and we really appreciate you for all of that. And I feel like I'm rambling a little bit as well, so I'm gonna close this up, but, um, but thank you, Jim, for, for everything you've done for us. It means a lot, and hearing stories from everyone this week has just been fantastic, so. Hey guys, uh, my name is Wamzi Tadapali, and uh, for those of you that might know me, and I'm actually fortunate to be surrounded by so many people that I played with here at UNC. Um, in the audience, I see some of you guys, but also backstage here and on, on the wings. Uh, most of you that know me know I'm not really a long-witted kind of person. I kind of just get to the point when I say things. Um, laughs, you get it, you get it. But um, I spent a lot of time in this, this room. Like before I even came to school here, in high school we would come to compete in our jazz competitions. Dave Robinson right in the audience, he would bring Jordan High School's jazz band and we would play it like the 8 a.m. slot. Um, it was painful every time. But all I ever hoped was that I could be in this band and play here uh, for, this guy, for this guy right here, Mr. Jim Ketch. And uh, I had the privilege for Five years, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I'm shortened to the point, but I took my time here at college. I wanted, to, I wanted to get as much of that out of it as possible. Um, but for five years, I had the privilege of playing lead alto, which basically what I mean by privilege is I, mean I, I got to sit directly three feet in front of Jim Ketch for five years, three days a week. And um, the energy and the passion that I felt for, for the music and from him coming from you every day um, it's just un unsurpassed. I mean, it was just, uh, uh, you know, like Becca just said, just infectious. And I don't know if it was just because I was right in front of him, but I always felt like he was always looking right at me when he was talking. <laughs> there was a little bit of that, but um, just the connection that I felt for, with him and with the music um, was just truly special. And I just want to say thank you for that. And... Um, Man, what a pleasure to be here to see all these people. We had some great memories on the stage in this state and across the pond. We got to go to Europe. I mean, man, what a pleasure. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Matt Brando. I was uh, class 2001, like many of us here tonight. It's been so amazing uh, seeing all my old friends these past two days and walking these halls and uh, hanging out with our old director and, and buddy. Uh, it's really got me like reflecting on life. 
Uh, and, you know, we don't always realize these amazing moments in life when they're happening. And uh, I'm definitely realizing what a special thing we had here. And uh, like so many of my classmates, cohorts now have said, like we've carried these lessons on in life. And I think it's important to acknowledge that this time right now, tonight, is one of those moments. Uh, I've been around long enough to realize that, hey, this is it. Um, and I just feel so privileged to be here. And uh, thank you for this. It's, it's, all, uh, it's all due to you. So, and thank you for being here and sharing it with us. Have a good night. What a night, right? My name is Charles Faniff. I was a jazz studies minor, graduated in 2003. And uh, gosh, this really does just bring back a ton of memories. And uh, it's just an honor to be here and just help celebrate Jim tonight. And you know, I thought we would probably hear a lot and, and think a lot about Jim as a musician, as an educator. And he, and he certainly was all those things to me like he was to everybody else you've heard from and everybody else on stage. And you know, that actually started with him bringing Clark Terry to Enloe High School in 1998. And I mean, how cool is that? as a young person to get to hear like one of the greatest living trumpet players coming to your high school and uh, and things like that wouldn't happen without Jim's work but you know I also was reflecting about what he's meant to me in my career my career's been in arts management and um, and you know I think Jim was also showed us a lot about leadership and about entrepreneurialism and you know I think about how important that was and what kind of example that set uh, set for us about you know what it means to be a musician in the world and, and how we really care for this art form. So um, just a couple examples of that. You know, y'all know Jim was chair of the department, and, uh, and of course that kind of institutional leadership is extremely important, but he did so much more than that. I mean, we've had several people talk about the trips to Europe, um, or the, the trip, maybe there was more than one I wasn't invited on, but <laughs> the trip to Europe, I mean, that was an, a life-changing experience for, for young folks to get to travel and see you know, world-class musicians and, and see the world. But also, you know, the records that we made. Um, Jim took us into the recording studio multiple times, and those kind of experiences were also just life-changing. So, you know, just in closing, I want to say thank you, Jim. Thank you for, for not only uh, the love and the care you taught for us about the music, but for all that you taught for us about life. And I know that your influence on us won't be forgotten anytime soon, not for the people um, that are on stage and not for everybody you impacted in all your years. Thanks very much, Jim. Thanks, Jim. I think I'm the, are we on? I think I'm the very last one here, Jim. Uh, I wanted to say just a few words um, about Jim as an educator. Since uh, I left here, I've devoted everything else that I've done to music education, and I'm not alone. So many of us uh, have done that. And I think that fact alone says something about Jim's teaching. I think our time with Jim, in addition to whatever we learned about music, um, it was a master class in teaching. And I think one of the big questions in arts education generally, and maybe music specifically, and maybe jazz even more specifically than that, is how do you teach creativity? Is this something that you just have or, or don't have? And in the context of jazz, how do you teach uh, people to innovate in a tradition that is based on innovation? In other words, how do you provide people a language that already exists and then prepare them to say something new with it. Uh, and I think one of the things that Jim modeled for us with absolute unfailing consistency from the bandstand to the recording studio to the wooden shoe and cheese factory, if some of y'all know, <laughs> know what I'm talking about there, um, was the idea that whenever you pick up your horn, you're embodying, literally, a musical tradition that is bigger than you but that far from diminishing you, that's what makes what you have to contribute to it meaningful. Uh, so with Jim, the idea of the history that we learned and that we then embodied, that he taught us to embody, history is not a locked trophy case full of dusty things to admire from afar, but it's a workshop uh, in which you're empowered to develop a musical voice and maybe figurative voice 
that is unique to your own way of seeing and hearing the world. Uh, and I think to do that successfully for 43 years, it doesn't get any bigger or better than that uh, as an educator, and it's something that we all uh, are indebted to him for, and that as educators, so many of us will strive to emulate. Thank you, Jim. The reason for this is because I've never been to a Jim Ketch, Ketch concert that's shorter than two and a half hours. <laughs> so I was worried when we only had eight tunes that we should do something else. Uh, uh, we have an another part here. Uh, some of us couldn't be here for this, uh, you know, huge occasion. COVID, you know, working a jobby, kids, you know, family ob uh, obligations, all kinds of reasons why. I mean, I don't think there's any real excuse for not being here. But uh, we'll do the next, you know, 43. But the, um, we have, a, we have some, some, some call-ins, you know, some dial-ins or some prepared things that we wanted to share with Jim uh, for people that couldn't be here. So I'd, I'd like to thank, uh, before I walk off here and, and never speak again, uh, I'd like to thank Becca and, and uh, Stake for uh, being a part of this planning uh, committee with, with me that Jim entrusted us in doing something. And uh, also thank uh, Peter Kamash for what you're about to see. But uh, thanks to all of you, and we'll, we'll end this segment with, um, <laughs> with uh, you know, uh, just roll the tape. You know. Hey, catch. Wishing you the best from Bremen, Germany. Uh, I think about you all the time and uh, what I learned in Carolina, and I use it uh, pretty much every day. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for all your work and dedication to the repertoire. And um, yeah, I'll uh, catch you later. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Professor Catch, wanted to send a quick congratulations to you um, on a wonderful career and a happy retirement. Um, so thankful for everything that you've taught me over the years and uh, look forward to hearing you play sometime soon. Hi, Professor Catch, congrats on your retirement. Woo! Hey, Professor Catch, this is Atticus here in the West Coast, and I just wanted to send my best wishes and hope you're well, and I'm really hoping to see you soon and hope this weekend goes really well. I have such great memories um, of UNC, and even before that, hearing you play um, at the UNC Jazz Festival, and really hope to see you soon, um, and thank you so much. Have a great day. Hi, Jim. This is Jeff Fowler. I want to congratulate you on your retirement, and I want to tell you how much uh, your teaching and music meant to me, and I still remember in loving your lines, and uh, it was great to have you as a teacher, and uh, all the best. So thank you for all you've done for North Carolina music and for a lot of the musicians that I know. It's been an honor. Thank you. Hey, Professor Ketch, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I just wanted to say congrats again on your retirement. I know that you're probably not taking anywhere near as much time off as you should be, and I know that all of us mm -hmm. probably expecting nothing less. So uh, I'm, I'm really sorry that I couldn't be there for the alumni weekend. Uh, I'm sure that you're going to have a great time reminiscing with a lot of different people on a lot of different memories. Um, I was honored to have been at Chapel Hill for just a very small part of your incredible tenure there. So um, I could not be more thankful to you for everything you've done. Um, I hope you're doing well. I miss you. Um, hope to see you soon. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye. Hey, Dr. Ketch. Just want to say thanks so much and congratulations. I'm glad there's a you know, day set aside just to celebrate you for all the time, energy, effort, and uh, just love that you put into helping each one of us out. Um, glad, sad I can't be there, but you know, glad to be able to you know, say my thanks and yeah, just thank you for all those um, countless opportunities where you're making sure we have what we need and us and leading by example all the time. So thanks so much. Hey, cats, Jonathan Minnick here. I wish I could be there to join you this weekend to celebrate your retirement, uh, but I'm here enjoying a century rainfall here in Sacramento this weekend, but uh, just wanted to send my well wishes to you and, your, and congratulate you on your retirement. What an amazing achievement after decades of amazing contributions to jazz music 
not only for the Carolina community, uh, but for the jazz nationwide, worldwide. Uh, you are a stellar instructor, mentor, leader, and uh, I, I, along with many others, I'm sure extremely grateful to have been under your guidance and tutelage uh, while we were here at Carolina. Um, I always look forward to seeing you at the jazz workshop, catching up over some hot dogs from Sutton's. Uh, it always brings me a lot of joy to see you uh, stroll in every morning. Uh, but I, I distinctly remember when we recorded the Basie albums, Atomic Basie with the jazz band, I thought that was a really, really fun project. And you exposed me to a lot of jazz music that I don't think I ever really would have found. Uh, and so I thank you so much for the wonderful education that you've given me, for the instruction, for, for teaching me jazz and how to appreciate jazz in such a remarkable way. Uh, couldn't have done it without you, and uh, I hope you have a wonderfully restful retirement. Uh, I'm sure you'll be keeping up playing and, and still being involved in the jazz community, but uh, you deserve this uh, after so many years of, of jazz excellence. Well done. Congratulations, Jim. Dr. Ketch, you mean so much to so many of us. You changed my college experience. You changed my life. Uh, I remember I was a voice major and I was told I was not allowed to participate with the jazz band. Um, and then I auditioned and you let me in knowing that anyway. And we had such an amazing time for a few years. I so appreciated your support and your musicality. And I, um, I really wish you the best. You're, um, you're one of a kind and we honor you and we adore you and you deserve an incredible next chapter. Hey, Professor Ketch, it's James Wallace here. Just uh, wishing you all the best and uh, congratulations on uh, a wonderful career and thank you for all your hard work. My senior year of high school, me and Peter Kimosh and Carter Guy lost our band director and you let us come over to UNC and take the combo class and we got credit for it and everything. And it was just an amazing experience. We wouldn't have had any kind of uh, music or band if we, if you hadn't let us come over and take that class. And uh, it was just a really great experience. And, and then uh, the other thing I was thinking about was that you, you offered me a scholarship to come to UNC and it was small. I, I think there wasn't a whole lot of budget for scholarships uh, at the time. But the thing that I remember is just that when you're a young person and somebody, you know, a teacher like you says, we want you to come here, you know, here, this is, we're giving you a scholarship. We want you to come. We value you. We think you could be an important part of this, this uh, group. That means a lot to a young person. It certainly meant a lot to me. Among the piano players that were there when I was there, um, I certainly was not the most technically proficient, and I didn't. I was definitely not the uh, greatest practicer. Uh, it always made me feel like I had specific skills, you know, a unique ability to do certain things that were in my wheelhouse or you know within my special taste zone that were really valuable and that you you needed, you know, that you had certain tunes in the big band that you were like, this one is for James, you know, James is going to play this one, Jack's going to play this one, you know, Kevin's going to play this one. Like, you, you really made each of us feel like we had a unique thing that we brought to the table that was important and that you wanted to bring out. So that feeling, you know, is, um, that's a really rare thing, I think, in a teacher. And, you know, you, you did that so well. Um, so I really appreciate that. All right, congratulations again. You know, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person to say this, but I did want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've made me a better man. You've made me a better musician. And it's all because you took the time to pour your love and appreciation for jazz and all of music into me. Uh, if anything, you know that Sugar Ray is always going to keep it on two and four, baby. And I'm always going to keep it swinging. So once again, I hope that you stay forever blessed. I'm forever eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. And um, yeah, I wish you nothing but the best moving forward.
<laughs> you know what the first thought went through my mind when this, this started up was, it doesn't take much for a teacher to say, heck yes, let's do it again next year. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding you. I mean, it just, I wanted to tell students that it's like, the trick to getting a good education is to invest in it. Because most of us get so excited about your investment in what we love that you stand, you know, you go home and you figure out, what can I do to make them better? What can I do to help them further along? And, and so to be reminded of, of that tonight is, is just the greatest of gifts. And um, I'm about this close to crying, so I, I'm not going to do that. Um, but I just, whew, I am, I am touched, and so is Susan, I know, and we will have many hours of discussion about what just took place in this room. That's great. Um, I knew that I, well, thank you, thank you. You're very kind. We're going to have you out of here by quarter to 12. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking back to the old uh, Saturday Night Live. You know, it's like I'm getting a little verklempt um, here. Here, it's <laughs> it's pretty moving. And I thought that might happen, so I've invited uh, Rob Simon, who was the first tuba player in the jazz band, uh, to conduct this next piece. And there's a number of reasons why the tuba you don't sort of associate necessarily with jazz, but he could play the bass trombone parts, and in the early days, we didn't have the bass trombone. And so far, I think about six, seven, eight years, we had a tuba in the jazz band. Well, Rob loved the wind ensemble, and Rob graduated and eventually ended up in, in Winston-Salem, where he has an incredible jewelry store. And, uh, but he founded the Piedmont Wind Symphony and created a 501c3 ensemble like um, Charles was talking about and had uh, Paul Anka, Maynard Ferguson, Arturo Sandoval, all these great people as, uh, as guest artists. And I, I would write him astounded. I said, how can you afford to pay Paul Anka? That must be $150,000. He said, well, I just worked at it and got sponsorships and all that. I said, man, I want to take your class and learn how to do that myself. So anyway, I'd like to introduce Rob Simon. He's going to uh, conduct this next piece, which is a wonderful little piece from the Stan Kenton Library called Theme and Variations. It's almost like a wind ensemble piece with a rhythm section. Yeah. And thank you all so much. Woo.
I have, to add, uh, I have to add my two cents worth here. A lot's been said this evening. You have the picture about Jim as a great educator, ins inspiration, tremendous energy. Jim was always great, as you see tonight. It's really not about him. He has a tough time having this about him. He always makes it so much about everybody else. He knows how to share. I want to put your mind back actually 44 years ago when Jim arrived on this campus just before several of us, maybe a week before, and he was 24 or 25 years old. And he was here for a one-year appointment. And it was really something, and I have to say, a lot of the professors that were on the search committee that spring, that winter and spring, they were bombarded with resumes and interest of people, trumpeters, great, great performers from all over the country that wanted this job at UNC. And I have to commend these guys 43 years later for having the insight to keep Jim Ketch here because look at all these decades of what he's produced for UNC and for all of us. And so a lot of those guys I didn't think much of at the time, but now I certainly do. And we had uh, great times touring with this jazz band, mostly to recruit guys like all these guys. And I can tell you when Jim was a kid and he was out there playing, and he was a kid, a baby-faced kid, I even remember one time we were talking about one of the stories where we were at a high school here in North Carolina. They had a play and they had a coffin backstage. And Jim said, hey, wouldn't this really be something if you know I could come out of the coffin? So a bunch of students carried him out. Coffin opens, rhythm section's going, trumpet comes up. And there's Jim starting a riff. And of course, you know, the kids went wild. Everybody else went wild. And there are thousands of stories like that playing at nightclubs and I remember playing for a Marines ball of all thing our jazz band and you know just you know Jim would get through everything and you know we've heard all these great things tonight but I have to tell you one thing there's the eye roll of Jim Ketch when something's going on oh you know you know what was going on anyway Jim so much love here for you and I appreciate being included tonight and you guys played great thank you Well, you got to be careful about these stories on stage, don't you?
that is good music. That'll make you young, that music, let me tell you. That'll make you young. So while they're changing pace, since they, you know, talked about me for like 20 minutes, so Will, who just played that solo, I don't know where he went, but anyway, you saw him and heard him play. So he was from Memphis. So for his senior recital, these are the things the teacher remembers. Will put on the poster for his senior recital, I will have Memphis barbecue and North Carolina barbecue for the reception. Come and make your own decision. <laughs> there was like 300 people at the recital. It was the highest attended uh, trumpet recital in the history of UNC Chapel Hill. Now that's entrepreneurship, let me tell you. Um, this, this next tune is, is, is a real um, poignant piece of music. It's called To You. It's written by Thad Jones. Um, it was only recently that I discovered that, that Thad would um, wrote that piece um, to honor members of the band who had passed away. And, um, and it, it, you'll, you'll tell immediately when you hear the music. And um, I, I'm not going to get emotional, but my mother passed away uh, October 22nd, 2020. So last Friday... Um, was the year anniversary of, of her passing. Now, she made it to 97, so we feel very blessed as a, as a family. But my mom so loved to come to these concerts and support me. So Becca was talking about giving it back. I can't tell you how many Saturday mornings in Peoria, Illinois, she drove me downtown to Byerly's Music, you know, to have my trumpet lesson with a German trumpet teacher named Carl Wood, who scared the heck out of my mom because he would break pencils on the music stand if I didn't have the right time. I thought he was the greatest thing in the world, but she said, we are not coming back here next week. I said, no, 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 he, he, he loves me, Mom. He, he's trying to make me better. So um, anyway, I'm going to dedicate this to my mom, who would have so loved to have been in this audience tonight.
Well, thank you so much for being a, uh, a part of this evening. Clearly, it's a hugely special night for me and, and my family, and we are so grateful. And, um, st well, students, kids, um, cohorts, colleagues, I don't know uh, how to call it, but I just, my friends, you know, the reason I uh, got up every morning, um, I just can't thank you enough. Um, I can still think back when I was an undergraduate and I would base my week on how well I played in the jazz band. It's that important to me. And um, they made it feel important to me too. So I'm so grateful to you all. We're gonna finish, I can't talk. <laughs> We're gonna finish with a tune we always finish with at concerts. So it's like some of these kids that, Oh, heck, yeah, I played that tune 20 years ago. So, oh, I played it 24 years ago. So it's just one of those fun tunes that uh, kind of a rouser. Um, and it has a North Carolina tie. It was written by John Coltrane, who's a native of North Carolina. It's called Impressions. And one of the guest artists that we had, I think, three times over my career here was the great trombonist Slide Hampton. And um, I'll tell you a little story. And it shows you that we do have some work to do in the arts in this country. Um, I was working the Savannah Music Festival, and I went down to breakfast at the hotel, and it was just Slide Hampton sitting there by himself. And I, I said, Mr. Hampton, can I, can I come and join you for breakfast? I'm here as part of the, the jazz workshop. And she, oh, yeah, yeah. And so I started talking about um, his appearances at UNC and how much they had meant to us. And I said, and I just have to tell you, we still play your great arrangement of John Coltrane's impressions. And he looked up at me and he said, oh, I'd love to see a score to that. <laughs> well, here's, I mean, it is kind of humorous, but it's not humorous in the sense that here was a guy that basically would send original music out to colleges to never get it back. And, you know, I just think of somebody like that should be a national treasure. And our country just doesn't even know who Slide Hampton was. So if anything we're doing in this auditorium tonight is realizing that we have this incredible gift that the United States gave to the world in jazz, and uh, it's up to us to preserve it. It's as simple as that. So um, it sounds good. It makes you happy. It, it's fun. But it, it's, you know, 
Go back and look at the Ken, Ken Burns documentary. The two things that he, he cited, I'm sure there are others now, was baseball and jazz as our gifts to the world. And uh, everybody everywhere else reveres it more than in our own country. I don't know if that's race-based or whatever the case may be, but it's a problem that nights like this should solve if we all have enough of these types of nights. So I thank you for making it so, and we're gonna finish with impressions.
We're going to get all the musicians up here. They all deserve part of this. Come on up, guys and gals. There they come. Steve Anderson, Steve Anderson, come on down. I see you, Steve, come on. Here he comes. Hey guys, let's take a bow together. One, two. Thank you so much. There's Rob. Yeah. Oh, it's one more. One. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. Okay, you're all invited over to our house for brunch tomorrow morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a great um, memory for a lifetime you've given us. So I, I'm so grateful, and I just wish all these folks safe travels home. And uh, I got your emails now, so uh, I want to be part of your lives. You make me feel so good. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Great night.